ready to get this one underway. As Bowling Green will receive, Ohio State won the toss and elected to defer. Tyler Durbin will handle the kickoffs today. Injury to Sean Nurnberger. He is out with the groin injury, so handling the kicks. The walk-on senior from Fairfax, Virginia, Tyler Durbin. Football 2016 is underway in Columbus from the six yard line. And an excellent play on special teams to start the day for Ohio State. The Buckeyes get a huge surge early and pin Bowling Green deep. Eric Glover Williams with the stop on special teams. And there's James Kanapke, eight and five in his career as a starting quarterback through for 15 touchdowns as a starter two years ago, but his third different offensive system in his career. From the 11 on first down. Looking for some running room and not much there as he gets to the 14-yard line. Cleveland tackled by Sam Hubbard. If you're looking for the Howard Maryland game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. Second down, Kanapke, an errant pass in the direction where Marshawn Lattimore was patrolling for the Buckeyes. Well, the one thing you're going to notice, what Bowling Green is going to try to do is go up-tempo. They're going to go up-tempo and try to spread the field. You can see right now with a four-wide receiver look, what they haven't seen is the athleticism of an Ohio State defense. Third down and seven. Kanapke to the air. Nice move, and then the ball knocked out as he hits the ground. The ball is loose. It is scooped up by the Buckeyes. Ohio State gets the turnover, and Damon Webb takes it down to the 34-yard line. Let's see if the ground didn't cause that fumble, because it looks like he may have been down. He had a chance to get first down yardage. As he made the cut, he slipped down. Knee is down. Ball still controlled. That will stay right there at the probably 19 and a half yard line. And Miller, who Matt was making that move, the sophomore out of Barrington, Illinois, had he been able to keep his footing, he had a lot of yeah. room to run. Yeah, there was some green in between. You're exactly right. Fumble, recovered by the defense, plays under further review. Well, we mentioned Mike Pereira was with us, and we get an official review 30 some seconds, 38 seconds into this game. So, Mike Pereira, what did you see on the review? Didn't take long, did it? This is uh, this is why they have replay to take these types of plays, which is an obvious error, and uh, and change it to what it needs to be called. Obviously, you've got a body part. The ball doesn't come out until really the elbow hits the ground. So he is clearly down by contact. They've got to go down now and make the changes um, both in the clock and the spotting of the ball. So it could take a little longer because of that, but. Replay is there to correct egregious errors, and this is why you like to have it, especially in plays like this that are changed possession plays. Now, as we look at that replay again from that field angle, the question's going to become, where is he in relation, Matt, to that first down marker, which is right across the 20-yard line at the 21. Yeah, and it's going to be short of that first down. It's right at the 21, and this one here should be probably at the 19 and a half to 20-yard line, so they'll be short and he'll have to punt. Looking for the 21-yard line. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to be short. Okay, so if you're Bowling Green, what did you get out of your first series? Okay, so you, you see with a, a nice pass completion like that, and they were able to hold up in the, uh, in the pass game up front in their pass protections. Those are things you can take away and say, okay, we're okay. What you're looking for right now on the sideline, if you're a Bowling Green coaching staff, is attitudes. I want to look at my players in the eyes to see if they think if those players know that they can play in this game. So a lot of times they come into an atmosphere like that and they're beat before they ever get out there. You're looking for guys who have some fight, who want to show you exactly what they got. You can win with those guys. The review finished. After review, the runner's knee was down. Prior to the ball coming out, it's fourth down, one yard to go. Fourth and one at the 20-yard line for Mike Jinks and Bowling Green.
got a very good punter his first season as the head coach of Bowling Green. They lost Dino Babers to Syracuse in the offseason. Yeah, Mike Jenks brings a philosophy from Texas Tech, which is you take Texas Tech and everybody automatically drop, takes a pass that. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Davidson on the punt. Dontre Wilson back deep for the Buckeyes. Low kick, bad That's kick. It. Gets a bowling green roll and trickles dead. Trickles dead near the 42-yard line. First team all back punter, just a 38-yard punt, and about 20 of those yards were on the roll after it bounced very short. So now the first series for the Ohio State Buckeyes. J.T. Barrett, 15-2 and two record as a starter. Ready to lead his offense onto the field. And the last two games at the end of last year, really the two most efficient games for this offense. Michigan, 252 yards, four touchdowns for J.T. Barrett and over 300 yards against Notre Dame. They moved Ed Warner up to the press box the final two games of the year to help with the play calling, and that offense really started to click. He stays up there now as the offensive coordinator. Barrett on the roll on first down finds Noah Brown and just the second career catch for Brown as Marcus Milton stops him after an eight yard gain. There's Ed Warner right here, Tim Beck on this side. Interesting, Ed Warner has a very good uh, understanding of the players down in that offensive line since he's coming from that group. He knows right now that the best way to get that offensive line unraveled is to let them run the football. And Barrett will run the football and get the first down to the 46-yard line. Trenton Green on the tackle. You talked at the top of the broadcast about this offensive line. Yeah. They are starting on the left side, Michael Jordan, a true freshman, starting at left guard. First time a true freshman has started on the offensive line at Ohio State since Orlando Pace. Yeah, not a bad, uh, not a bad guy to follow. This kid is special good. And he is big, he's strong, and he can move. Great athleticism. Here he is, right there, number 73. Barrett on the option. Looking for running room is Samuel with the spin. And Samuel down to the 41-yard line. Tackle made by Trenton Green for Bowling Green. Samuel's a guy who's an interesting one. Now, he hasn't been a starter full-time all the time. Curtis Samuel has been a guy that they've put in different spots to try to make big plays because he has huge explosive capabilities. They'd like to get the ball in his hands at least 15 times a game. On second and five, Barrett off play action, throws the interception. He, he is picked off. Needs somebody to pick him. A lot of room to run. A flag is down into the end zone for the touchdown. Flag is back at the 34-yard line. Brandon Harris has the touchdown for now, but we'll wait and see about the flag. Yeah, that's a heck of a play by that defender. Yeah, he gave him the okie doke Yeah, so he's supposed to go. They're going to flare this thing out, and they're going to take the defender and try to come outside. And what he does is he doubles back. Really well done. Watch, he's going to come up. Now drop. He just baited him. He okey doke him. Instead of going up for the pitch, he dropped back into that little spot. There is no foul on the play for defensive interference. The ball was not catchable. The score is good. And Bowling Green takes the lead on the 63-yard interception return for the touchdown by Brandon Harris. Austin Valdez did a heck of a job also of staying alive the whole way down and shielding JT Barrett from being able to make a play. Jake Suter for the extra point. Seven nothing lead for Bowling Green to start the day at Ohio Stadium. Brandon Harris quieting this crowd. The interception by the sophomore from East Cleveland, Ohio. And Brandon Harris adding a little life 
to the Falcons on the road, flying high early with a 7-0 lead. Okay. As Bowling Green will kick off to Urban Meyer's Buckeyes. Mike Jenks' career starts off on a high note with the interception return for the touchdown. Yeah, a guy known for offense, he got a little defense. And that's one of the things, when you talk to folks around Bowling Green, they've been so heavily balanced with the offensive side outweighing the defense, they think that balance is going to shift a little bit this year, especially early. And that would indicate the case as the defensive score puts Bowling Green on top. Brandon Harris really did a really nice job. There's a couple things that he did in that coverage that faked, uh, faked out JT Barrett. Andre Wilson back. It's a short pooch kick calling for the fair catch and down at the 29 yard line as we check in with Lisa Byington. Well, Kevin, in that interception, JT Barrett might have kept a bad habit. He told me this week when he struggles, he would panic looking downfield. He would hesitate in the pocket. He said, I would go back and watch film of my hesitation moments. And during some drop back passes, I was doing a three step drop and I was taking a hitch move forward. But sometimes I was hitching twice or even three times and I was taking way too long. What'd you see on that, Matt? Yeah, that's that's what ended up happening is Brandon Harris did a heck of a job watching. So he's gonna jump, make it look like he's gonna jump up, and that's why that's why JT Barrett hitches. Because what he's looking for is here, and then he had to go to the second read. And because he jumped that and then fell back, he got beat. So now first down at the 28-yard line. Weber with the carry. Breaks a tackle. Breaks through another man, and Weber showing nimbleness and power. Gets the first down to the 46. Bush and Sotolongo combined on the stop for Bowling Green. So here's a name, Mike Weber, that a lot of fans haven't heard and or don't really know him. Power is what you're going to see, and that's what you're going to expect from him as time goes by. Keep in mind, this kid's got outstanding speed as well. Oh, he was frustrated there, pounding the turf as he just got tripped up, working his way through the hole into Bowling Green territory. Now a little pace for the Buckeyes. Yeah, before he got hurt. In the spring game, he ran for 150 yards against his this that defense that had all those high draft picks. Curtis Samuel with the first down at the Bowling Green 42. So Ohio State responds with a little pace of their own. Do you feel like that sort of poked a stick into the cage yeah, a little bit here? You just don't want to wake up the monster. <laughs> Movement up front. False start. Offense, number 73. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. That's the freshman, Michael Jordan. A little youthful exuberance. Gets you going. Based on the potential he has, I would guess by the time the career ledger is written on Michael Jordan, there will be more positive than negative plays. There will be a lot more positive, and you also see him this year inside. I, my guess is he's a left tackle. That's how athletic he is. That's how long he is, and that's where his future is. We have a bit of a timing issue here. Yeah, see these, see these new helmets that they have? Those are called flex helmets, and they're designed to take the blow out of headbutt. It's kind of an interesting, you see this thing up top here. See, and that moves. Oops. Yeah, that moves. And so when there's the impact, it gives a little bit. It's a new concept out. I kind of like it. First and 15 at the 47. Andre Wilson joining JT Barrett in the backfield. Lots got of him. time for Barrett. Deep. KJ Hills got it. Touchdown! Well, remember we talked about we have some, uh, we have athleticism, we just have to be able to use it. Well, this is just a matter of just pure speed. 
And this is a matchup JT Barrett sees it. He has one on one in the slot, and he just it's just a takeoff. And because of the protection, he's able to wait just a little bit. No hitches needed, Lease, and it's six quick. Tyler Durbin tacking on the extra point. KJ Hill fired up. There wasn't a wide receiver who'd had a touchdown catch until right now on this roster. So you see the routes in isolation. So Hill's in the slot. You're going to pull your outside receiver up, and you give him the whole field to work with. JT Barrett, a happy man. He just tied this thing up. We'll be right back. The two-yard drive, the touchdown strike to KJ Hill. It's the Buckeyes on the board, and even with Bowling Green at seven apiece. That, that touchdown pass was an example of what Lisa was talking about in terms of JT Barrett being in control. Kick off three yards deep, and that'll be down for a touchback. Matt, how'd they score so easily? Yeah, so this is, I said, this is about control. So first of all, he's going to go with a max protection. That means all five offensive linemen, plus six, plus seven. So you are you are going to be sound up front. The second thing, he's going to cut this field in half. He's looking completely to this side, on the up on the top side. So the outside receiver is going to run and come back, which gives the receiver, K.J. Hill, all this on the outside to work with. And that's just, he just runs right past him. And because of the offensive protection up front, it's just pitch and catch. Really well done. From the 25, first down. Kanapke, the quick slant, the catch made, and a first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Derek Pudavong with the catch. Gary on Conley on the stop. You're going to like Kanapke. Yeah, he, he's got the same kind of confidence. He's not afraid to let the ball go and throw it into tight coverage. He's going to have tight coverage here today. His 14th start, 8-5 and five record. On first down, a little hesitation by Fred Coppett. Then he bursts forward to the 41. Dante Booker on the tackle, five-yard gain. Yeah, if Bowling Green is going to have a shot to stay in this game, this is what they have to do. They have to be able to move the football and get a little confidence going. Top it'll empty it out. Yep. The napke over the middle. Nice catch by Ronnie Moore. Moore making a move and a first down into Buckeye territory. So here's a concept for you. If you're Ronnie Moore and you have very good speed, might be the fastest guy in the MAC. Don't run him down the field. Run him across the field. Let him run away from his coverage. Napke again. Protection breaks down late, but open is Miller. He just couldn't get it to him. Yeah, but Miller, Miller opened late. Kanapke had him. He read. That was really nice. Well done by Kanapke. He went from his left side all the way back to the other side. Because he had, and this is key, he had protection in time. His third offense that he's had to master at Bowling Green. Looks pretty comfortable in it early. On second and ten. Top it to the 44. Booker and Worley on the tackle for the Buckeyes. Okay, so what you want to do right here if you're Bowling Green, you're not so worried about a score. You're worried about moving those chains, putting yourself in a position to pick up first downs. Has to be done right here in this third and five. Here's Coppett with a hole. Flag is down. Coppett stops short of the first down at the 40 yard line. Raquan McMillan in there on the tackle for the Buckeyes. Bowling Green is backing up. Looking in the middle of that offensive line for a hold. Urban Meyer says back him up. Holding. Offense. Number 71. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. We'll call up the center, number 71. You can see him right here. So they're going to back out of there. And that's, uh, I would not agree with that call. Regardless, it was going, it was going to be, a, it was going to be short of the third, but it gives them an opportunity. Third and 15. Kanapke to the sideline and out of bounds goes Ronnie Moore. 
At the 45, Denzel Ward chases him out there. Short of the first down, they're but gonna, they're going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, they're going to go for it. I think, I think this Kanapke kid's got some good confidence. I think he sees the field pretty darn well, too, and he's accurate with that arm. Needs seven for the first. And a timeout's going to be utilized by Ohio State. Timeout, Ohio State. Bowling Green going for it on fourth down in a 7-7 ball game. Beautiful day on the campus of Ohio State, a 7-7 ball game in the first, and a decision has been made, and a change of decision. Bowling Green is going to punt after the timeout. And a smart decision if they could make them go for more than 80. Andre Wilson back deep, awaiting the punt from Joseph Davidson, trying to pin the Buckeyes deep. And the fair catch made at the nine. Being named a starter is a big deal, but maybe even bigger for mom and dad. Your son has done a great job, and so I want to give you guys a call to let you know he's today. Today we're going to name him the starting tailback at Ohio State. Oh my God. I know, right? <laughs> so he doesn't even know yet. So we're going to we're going to let him know that this afternoon. But uh, I want to give you guys a call and let you know that. <laughs> I get the sense that Mike Weber's mom might have been a little excited about just that, but I'm just reading into it. <laughs> First career start for Mike Weber, who redshirted last year. He tore his meniscus in the preseason. It healed, but they went ahead and redshirted him last year behind Ezekiel Elliott. On first down, this is Curtis Samuel. Samuel with the spin, almost able to break free, but Austin Valdez, who led the Mac in tackles last year, wasn't going to let him get by. Yeah, so he's a 240-pound kid. He's got really good instincts. His eyes are outstanding. He believes his eyes, which is rare for a, for a young linebacker. Of course, he's a senior, but that's a pretty good football player. On second and four, toss to the sideline and a first down. Caught by Johnny Dixon and run out by Alfonso Mack. Barrett, quick toss to the sideline, open Marcus Ball, his tight end. And a nine-yard pickup to the 34. Now, people forget that uh, Urban Meyer brought this spread hurry-up stuff to Bowling Green years ago. And he's been using it occasionally here at Ohio State with great success. On second and one. Barrett, good protection again and incomplete. Looking over the middle for ball once more. Austin Valdez there to break it up. And the offense at Ohio State, Matt, they really emphasize tempo throughout their spring. And JT Barrett said that they play faster as a result of what they did over the course of the spring. And that's uh, that's one of those things for an offensive lineman, you kind of have to get a little used to it. But for a defensive player, it's brutal because you're, you're pushing the rock uphill all the time. Third down and a yard. Weber in a tailback. Ohio State was trying to sneak the spot forward just a little bit. <laughs> now third and one. Weber with the carry. Weber with the first. Ooh. One ankle away from breaking it up. There's a flag down as Trenton Green got a hold of the ankle to trip up Mike Weber. But we'll see about this flag on third and one. Holding, defense, number 93. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Shannon Smith with the hold. Lunsford and Smith are the two Falcons that have some size on the inside. You're going to see him right here. So, he, so all he's doing, see how, see how he grabs him and pulls him? He, he pulled Michael Jordan with his left hand. That's... Actually, that's good defensive line play <laughs> if you don't get called. And that's to free up his linebacker, and the backer didn't fill as quickly as he should have. Once you turn the big 310-pound freshman, it becomes kind of obvious that you're holding him. Yeah. Curtis Samuel up the middle, tripped up after an eight-yard gain to the 41. 
Trenton Green again on the tackle. We've called Trenton Green's name a lot early for Bowling Green. Yeah, and he's a, he's a kid who's, who's an active guy, and he has to be. He's going to have to be active today. He's got good instincts, plays in open space pretty well. On second and short play action. Barrett floating it deep down the sideline for Dixon, just past the outstretched arms of Johnny Dixon. Adam B. A little bit better throw, it would have been six. So Ohio State is not afraid to let everybody know that we have the speed to run right past you. And when that happens, that loosens you up as a defense. You have to kind of give just a little bit more cushion, and then he'll start throwing more things underneath. So now third and one. They cashed in on the third and one a moment ago with Weber up the middle, and then the holding penalty tacked on to the end of that. A.J. Alexander, the motion man. Here's Weber with the carry, and Weber's going to have the first down just inside the 37. And for more on Mike Weber, we check in with Lisa. Yeah, Kevin, I've been watching him in the pregame. I've been watching him on the sideline. And the big thing for Mike Weber today is to balance and to handle his emotions. I walked up to him in the pregame. I said, hey, how you feeling? And he just looked at me and he said, I am so nervous. I have been nervous <laughs> all week. I have never felt like this. And this is coming from a guy who grew up a Michigan fan, guys. Oh, out of Cass Tech High School. His high school coach called him the best running back in Detroit public schools in over 30 years. Well, he's he's really fun to watch. And you said this is a, he's a red for, redshirt freshman. They put the redshirt on him uh, just a year ago. But um, you can see already he's got he has nice feet inside. He can redirect really well. Barrett, great protection again. Has to run. Good coverage downfield. Steps through a tackle, spins through the second, dropped by Antonio Sotolongo. And we got a Falcon down on the 35-yard line. And that is Trenton Green. That has been their most active defensive player in this first quarter, Matt, and he's down. And not a big kid. You know, he's 5'9", 215 pounds. But I'll tell you, like I said before, he's very good in space. He believes his eyes. And you'll hear me say that. What exactly does that mean? Sometimes when things develop in front of you, as a young player, you see it, but you don't really believe what's happening in front of you. As you get a little bit older and you see it, you react a lot quicker. And he does that very well. And that comes from an understanding of what you're seeing or yeah. just experience really? to know what you're seeing? Yeah, pretty much it's experience. 7-7 seven, seven score here as we check in with Mike Hall in Chicago for our Safe Light Studio Update. Green is up and making his way toward the sideline, which is a good sign for Bowling Green. They need Trenton Green on the field. He had 127 tackles a year ago, double digits in eight of the Falcons games last year. And off to a good start here. So an interesting third and six, Matt, kind of the medium range for Ohio State. They've had a couple of third and ones. What do you expect here? I would expect he's going to, it'll, it'll end up being a pass, but if he spreads things out and he likes the numbers or lack of numbers in the box, JT Barrett, like we said, he's in control of this offense. He might he might just sneak it up, and it's a, it's a light box right there. Curtis Samuel is to the left of JT Barrett. They're two for two on third down. Fakes the pitch. Barrett up the gut, breaks a couple of tackles, and he's got the first down. So you heard me say a light box. So let me show you what that is, if we can get it in here before they go real quick. So it's just you got four down linemen, and your, your backers are sitting off. So if you try to spread a little bit what they did with that little pitch, that opens up the inside, and he was able to pick up the first down. Up to the 25-yard line, first down and 10. Big toss again, Barrett with protection, throws to the five and into the end zone for the touchdown, Dontre Wilson. So Kevin, 
The common theme we've seen through this first quarter is great protection. And that's the offensive line and the backs doing a great job. JT Barrett's had lots of time to be able to find his receivers. And the extra point from Tyler Durbin is good. JT Barrett getting extra time and forcing those defensive backs to cover longer. Yeah, and Will, exactly what this Ohio State football team right now is taking advantage of. Is we, we talked at the start of the game that this was an athletic team with just not a lot of experience. Part of that athleticism is this speed, and you're seeing it. Trying to find the corner and out of bounds at the 24 yard line as we check in with Mike Hall in Chicago. He's got another Safe Light Studio update. So Wilton Spate gets the nod. And kind of like JT Barrett, throws the pick early and then comes back and gets rolling again. Yeah, that team is just going to do nothing but get better and better, much like this Ohio State team. Same thing, they'll have the same kind of profile. If only those two teams would play a game yeah. at the end of the year that, that would, would have be some interesting. importance. Yeah. Yeah. First down as Coppett tries to turn the corner and he can't. Buckeyes collapsing on Coppett on the edge as Joe Berger and Tyquan Lewis combine on the stop. Joe Berger recruited by Bowling Green, but always wanted to play in the Big Ten. Walked on and is now a captain. On second down, Kanapke with pressure coming, gets rid of it. And that duck wobbling out towards both McMillan and Worley. Falls incomplete. Big Ten football continues at 3:30 as Penn State hosts Kent State, or some will see Illinois taking on Murray State. And then tonight in prime time, it's Nebraska taking on Fresno State. That's all on BTN and BTN to go. Go to btn.com/gamefinder to find the game in your market. Third and 11 for Bowling Green down a touchdown. Adamore came with a blitz off the sit as a, off the corner that time to provide the pressure. Three-man rush. Lewis with the pressure. Kanapke able to step away and floats it into traffic, and it's incomplete. That ball broken up by Damon Webb as Ronnie Moore got there, and Webb just pried his arm away. Yeah, well, you said it right. If he could have got a little bit more juice on that, he was rolling to his left and had to come back to his right to the center of the field, and he wasn't able to get enough on it because he had an open receiver. And then a nice job of Moore coming back to the ball and actually turns into a defender here. That could have been that could have been a pick. Nice job by by Webb also. If Webb would attack that thing a little bit better, it could have been a pick. Andre Wilson back, awaiting the punt from Joseph Davidson. Another low line drive punt. Wilson bobbles it. And it makes a good turn for the Buckeyes as it goes out of bounds. And Ohio State will start at their own 27-yard line. 14-7 lead for Ohio State. Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Millen. And after the early hiccup, the interception, the way back for a touchdown, things have gone a lot better for the Buckeyes. Yeah, well, they just settled down. That's all it is. It was, you know, it was, he got okie doke. That's all it was. And so now they settled back down. And he responds with two touchdown passes. And now what you're seeing is that the athleticism that we talked about. And so Ohio State has settled in. They're just going to, they're bigger, faster, stronger, and you're seeing all those evidences. And you're looking at this offensive line, as I know you have all day long. What have you seen from this group of returning starters in the middle and those three young guys on the outside? Well, I think Elf Line does a really nice job of controlling that offensive line. Here's Barrett on first down. On the roll with a flag down. Skips that one towards Curtis Samuel. Yeah, this might be on Billy Price, the other guy who has a lot of experience up there. Holding. Offense, number 54, 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Yeah, this is Billy Price, who's on the right side after two years on the left. Yeah, but it's a tough, it's a tough block for Billy Price because they're going to pull him 
and then they're also going to bring the quarterback his way. And so once JT Parrott, Barrett gets outside as he starts to roll, the price right there has got to go, okay, how do I slow him down a little bit? Pretty good penetration by Terrence Bush of Bowling Green causing some problems back there and forcing the hold. So now first and 20 back at the 17-yard line for the Buckeyes. Weber on first down. Fights his way forward to the 21. Broke initial contact from Austin Valdez and Antonio Sotolongo to get those extra two yards. This is a series right here for Bowling Green. They've got to take advantage of that penalty. They can't give up a big play here. They've got to be able to force a, uh, a, a kick. They just gave up a 91-yard drive last time out. That defense got to be feeling it a little bit right now. They're going to spread them a little bit. On second and 16. Middle of the field's open. And it's Samuel who's got it. Look out! Curtis Samuel turning on the Jets! Nobody going to catch him. He's gone for the touchdown. Well, Kevin, I wasn't the only one who saw the middle of the field <laughs> open. Samuel saw it was open, and most importantly, JT Barrett saw it was open. And they got to it in a hurry. And Samuel got to the end zone in a hurry. No wonder Urban Meyer says he's our number one playmaker. Speed to burn for Curtis Samuel. And the extra point is good, and the Buckeyes have scored 21 unanswered after the pick six. Well, you heard Lisa Byington talk about JT Barrett and how he says he, when, he's, when he's solid in the pocket, things work out well. Well, you can see right there, he is solid right down the middle. Sees the middle of the field, knows where Samuel is, and it's 98 and out the gate, boys. For his uh, 24th game, A.T. Barrett, 4,000 career passing yards. Well, what's more impressive than the 4,000 is how quickly he saw the middle of the field open up. And the adjustment of Samuel to get to the middle of the field one defender to beat. He faked them outside, got to the inside. It was gone. Short kickoff. Miller from the 10 yard line. Miller with a little bit of a hole at the 25, and the cut started to stumble at the 28 and goes down there. Eric Smith covering him up for Ohio State. And now Bowling Green on the road, down two touchdowns. They've been able to move the ball in fits and starts, Matt, but nothing consistent on offense. And that's what they have to be on this series. Okay, it's 21-7. They they've shown that they can move in spurts, like you've mentioned, but they've got to put a, a drive together here right now. They've got to be able to get six. Five receivers for Bowling Green as they spread it out on first down. Pressure coming late in the pass to the sidelines, incomplete. They brought Raekwon McMillan on a delayed blitz. Did not get to Kanapke, and he threw it incomplete. Yeah, that's, that's on Kanapke. He threw it to the wrong side of the receiver. Had he thrown it to the outside, that's a completion, and he's up the field. Hit as he throws Kanapke down the sidelines, looking for Pudavong, and there's the flag. Marshawn Lattimore was on the coverage. May have had an arm around him. Yeah, they're going to get they're going to get Lattimore here for pass interference. Pass interference, defense number two, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Watch Pudavong. See right there, Lattimore really doesn't have to. All he should do is just. When that receiver looks, you look. He has the speed to be able to close on that ball. Fudovong did a nice job of getting half a step on him. Lattimore, who's made it through camp for the first time, he's had hamstring injuries through his entire career. Able to battle through and get on the field as a starter today. Kanapke to the air quickly. Dancing around is Moore. Moore looking for the sideline, and he's chased out by Malik Hooker. Nice, nicely done by Moore. Not a real big guy. 
I mean, Ronnie Moore is five foot nine and maybe 170 pounds soaking wet with a rock in his hand. But he is quicker than a hiccup. Now try saying all that stuff real fast. Uh, there's no way. <laughs> and if I have a rock in my hand, it's even harder. Exactly. <laughs> On first down, cop it down to the 41 yard line where Jalen Holmes and Raekwon McMillan combine on the stop. Yeah, I'd get the ball in Moore's hands more if I could. Injured Buckeye. And that is Tracy Sprinkle. His defensive line, they rotate between eight and ten guys in there. Tracy Sprinkle who really stepped up in the Fiesta Bowl for this Buckeye squad. Was a D end when he first got here, has moved inside. And Larry Johnson, who I know you have a ton of respect for on yeah. this Ohio State coaching staff, he says the one thing that stands out about Tracy Sprinkle, his leadership is just outstanding. And in a defensive line that has some different parts and different faces, that leadership really important for the Buckeyes this year. Yeah, Sprinkle was set to have a big, I guess, him right here. He was set to have a big breakout year this year. You mentioned he moved from defensive end down to the inside. He's a bigger man now than he was. So I don't know what happened there. Ooh, he got pushed in just awkwardly with that on that right knee, it looks like. But we'll find out. Obviously, the Buckeyes very concerned about Tracy Sprinkle. He redshirted in 2013 when he got here, moved from the end to inside. And now he'll be helped to the sideline. There's a lot of disappointment in that face right there. Quan McMillan coming over. It's Tracy Sprinkle. We'll head to the sideline. Two sixteen to go in the first. Urban Myers Buckeyes up twenty one to seven. And second down and eight coming up here for Bowling Green. They're going to take Tracy Sprinkle directly to the locker room. Second down and eight for Bowling Green. Coppett trying to find room up the middle, and Raekwon McMillan right there to make the stop of the 39. Now, Raekwon McMillan, who has something to say to Coppett right there at the end of that thing. Uh, you can see the development he's made since his freshman season. And he's the guy who's really the leader of that defense. On third down, Kanapke to the air, and that's incomplete. Great coverage. Tio Redding was the intended receiver. Gary on Conley was on the coverage. There is a flag down. It's on the near sideline. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. Defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. Oh, going to get another lot chance here at third down. Yeah, you can see, he didn't get off in time. That's the pace of Bowling Green's offense. That's what ends that. up happening, yep. So now third and one. Third down, gives it to Coppett. Coppett gets met by Berger and dropped. He's not getting there. Nice adjustment by Raekwon McMillan with his, with his defensive front. Right before the ball is snapped, he kicked him down, and Berger stepped up inside, was able to make that play. Nicely done by Joe Berger also. They're going to go for it here on fourth, and I would too. Down 21-7. Got the ball at the 34-yard line of the Buckeyes. 
You need the 33. It's a full yard. They give it to the speed man more on the end around, and he's got the first down to the 29-yard line where Malik Hooker chases him out of bounds. Not a real big guy, that Ronnie Moore, but I'll tell you what, he's fun to watch. He's a, he's a quick little thing, and he plays with some pretty darn good confidence. He's going to give Mac coaches a headache over the course of this year. On first down, Kanafke looks right over the middle, and that one's caught. Down to the 23-yard line by Miller. Chris Worley right on top of him on the coverage. One thing you'll notice on all, there's no, these coverages are all tight. Really tight coverages, which means Kanapke, he's got to be really accurate. Second down and four. That's Miller in motion. Miller, reverse. Moore throwing back to Kanapke, and it's off his hands, incomplete. Turned his hands the wrong way. If he'd have laid him out the other way, he tried to come back and catch it with his hands in front of his face. See this? Right there. See, if he turns his hands the other way, he knows it, and so does everybody else. Ronnie Moore. My one chance at a completion. <laughs> that could have been a touchdown. Movement up front. Flags, Flags down. Throw to the end zone. Jump ball, and it's incomplete. But it looked like Kanapke on third and four coached some movement up front from that Ohio State defensive line. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Yardage results in a first down. Kanapke must have known that he had that. That's why he took the shot down the field. That was Jones on the inside, number 86, who's... Pretty good inside pass rusher. It came in when Tracy Sprinkle went out with the injury. Yep. First and 10 at the 18-yard line. Top it with the carry. Raquan McMillan on the stop at the 17-yard line. Joe Berger also in there to help. We're seeing more and more Raquan McMillan getting involved here. And Joe Berger. Both those guys, are they're finding the football pretty well. Raquan McMillan, he, we've been talking about him for three years already. He's, he's legit. Kanapke back towards the end zone, and that one a little too tall for Janarvis Pugh, the freshman from Hollywood, Florida, Gary on Conley with good coverage. Yeah, Conley, you're going to say that all day. You're going to say good coverage all the time. And again, to reiterate what I just said, that puts more pressure on the quarterback. Kanapke has to be perfect with the ball. Gary on Conley, the only returning starter in that secondary. Third down and a flag is down. False start. Offense, number nine, five yard penalty, remains third down. Now, what wind there is, is right now at the backs of the Falcons. It's not a significant advantage down on that field, probably five to 10 miles an hour, but yeah. it is at their back with 15 seconds it's to go in the court. That, that's not going to be a big deal. What is a big deal is going to be this guy right here, and that's Ronnie Moore. Keep your eyes on him. That's who I'm going to on third down. Third and long. Kanapke looking for the end zone. Jump ball, and Pudavon couldn't get it off the carom. Marshawn Lattimore. Good with, coverage again. With good coverage. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to run away from anybody. Ohio State has that part locked down. So instead of running away from them vertically, you're going to have to try to go horizontally. Run away from your coverage across the field. Maybe try a couple of picks or something like that. Fourth down and 14. They're going to go for it. Kanapke. Moore. Trying to stutter step around. He's stopped at the 15 by Raekwon McMillan. Yeah, that was the third down play you should have had. That's that's what I was talking about. Get it to more early. Set if you're going to go for it on fourth, you go fourth and more manageable. And that was in reverse. And that is the end of the first quarter. After a pick six started it for Bowling Green, 21 unanswered for the Buckeyes. Saturday in Columbus with me, but when he found out Kyle Snyder was in the house, he was on the next plane. Olympic gold medalist Kyle Snyder what a, getting honored today. What a great uh, wrestler to watch. I mean, he is he is really fun to watch. Buckeyes with it first and 10 at the 15-yard line as we start the second quarter. Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Millen. Lisa Byington on the field. We'll check in with Lisa in just a moment. As 
Weber on first down reverses his field on the counter and Weber close to a first down just shy of the 25 and with Kyle Snyder is the aforementioned Lisa Byington. Yeah and you just had a hundred thousand plus fans chant your name and chant USA. What was that feeling like? Got the goosebumps. It's awesome. Real thankful to be at a university like Ohio State with such great fans and uh, such great athletics. <laughs> And James Clark, what a way to get your first career catch. The dive along the sidelines to pick up 39. On first down and 10 now at the 36, and this one may be reviewed. Rolling on the field is a completed catch. The play is under further review. So while they check on that, we'll check back in with Lisa standing by with Kyle Snyder. Well, the roar on that play was almost similar to the roar you got. You know, at 20 years old, no other American wrestler has won a gold medal. What was that feeling like? And hold this up, you're getting kind of good, right? And holding yeah. up the hardware. Yeah, um, it was an incredible feeling. You know, it's hard to put it in words. Just really emotional and really happy with the way I was able to compete. And a lot of, a lot of people helped me get to where I'm at, so it's a pretty special moment. You have said you want to compete in five Olympics yeah. after Rio. What about Rio made you think that that might be possible for you? Well, the goal was five Olympics before I even, you know, went to Rio. I think that you know, I feel good now. We'll see how I feel when I'm 30 years old competing, but uh, just no one's ever done it before. So that, I like doing things no one's ever done. Uh, you certainly did exactly that. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. You've had a chance to look at this replay and the monitor on the field, part of the new rules that they're using this year, a chance to look at it on the field for the official on the field to take a look at that. It's the experimental rule that they're looking at on the field right now and a chance to get a good look at it through the technology on the field. And see, as that referee gets older, that DV Sport camera get, uh, screen gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this looks like it's going to be an incompletion because the, the ball, he bobbled it when it hit the ground. And I would say this is going to be incomplete. Well, Mike Pereira is our rules analyst back at our Fox studios in Los Angeles. The monitor is a new addition to the sidelines this year. How does that help the official on the field with a chance to look at it, Mike? Well, two things, I think. The one thing I like about it is the referee gets to give some input, but more importantly, when he now has to announce what he's going to do, he's going to reverse this, he can better explain what happened because he saw it. And, uh, you know, before he's had to rely on what the replay official told him, and sometimes you lose things in communication. So now he can explain why it's incomplete, and I think he'll be more accurate in his uh, announcement. The receiver did not maintain control of the pass. It is an incomplete pass. It's third down and one. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 35 seconds. 14.35. Thir thank you. Well, just as Mike said, Matt, he gave a very detailed analysis because he was able to see that replay. Yeah, and I think every referee wants that. Let, let them get their own eyes on it. And then once you once you have that, it's a lot easier to explain. Anything you can do to help a really good group of officials do their job even better is a good thing. It's a good group. Barrett on third and one. He's got the first to the 31. Austin Valdez, the first to get to JT Barrett, but not before he picked up seven and a first down. Yeah, and so when your middle linebacker, he makes a tackle, but when Valdez, your middle linebacker, is making it after a gain of seven, that's that means your offensive line is winning. On first down, picking up the pace again as Weber bounces off would be tacklers and gets 10 to the 40 yard line. We're seeing power out of him, but he's more than that. He, he has some make you miss in him, and I think he's got some long speed. He's like a 4-5 guy. Real speed is like 4-4-5 four, four, and under. But when you start using your angles and stuff, a guy like Weber, they're tough to catch. I remember Marcus Allen was one of those guys who, yeah, he was only a 4-6 guy, but nobody could catch him. Fast enough when it mattered. Exactly. Second down at half a yard, just shy of the 40-yard line. The give is to Samuel. Curtis Samuel's got the first to the 42. It was a big task this year, Matt, for 
this Ohio State run game. You've got to replace Ezekiel Elliott, who now is going to be manning the backfield in Dallas, and his 1,821 rushing yards that went with him. Mike Weber, though, he roomed with Ezekiel Elliott at camp last year and then at the Fiesta Bowl, trying to pick his brain and get as much info as he could from that great Ohio State running back. Well, there's no teacher like experience. And the more he plays, the better he's going to get. And then you're going to have Turtle, uh, Curtis, Turtle, man, far from the Turtle. <laughs> Curtis, total service. <laughs> Barrett. With good protection again, airing it deep, jump ball, and the pass is incomplete, and here comes the flag. And that's the right call. Paris Campbell, the intended receiver, one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Milton. And Milton had great coverage, and so the ball hung. He tried to come back on it. Hey, he just pass interference. Have... Defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Yeah, so you have to... If he wouldn't have grabbed him, he would have been fine because he was going to play the ball. Marcus Milton had great coverage. Gives up the, gives up the first down with the penalty. At the 48 of Bowling Green. Or 43, rather, of Bowling Green, first down. Weber, nice cutback, has a hole, and Weber across the 30 yard line. And down at the 29. 14-yard gain that could have been a little bit more. A shoelace tackle saved what might have been six. Yeah, that's uh, that's about the third time he's been tripped just a little bit. He's going to break one of them sooner or later. Weber nine carries, 71 yards in the early going. Play action. Barrett on the roll, and he throws it wide of A.J. Alexander as we get an injury update from Lisa Byington. Yeah, an update on sophomore defensive tackle Tracy Sprinkle. His day is done with, out with a right knee injury, and frankly, I watched the Ohio State medical staff. They took maybe a minute to rule him out. It didn't take long at all, but they have depth on that defensive line. They're going to have to use it here today. Now the depth being tested early, Lisa, with the injury to Tracy Sprinkle. Right now, the offense showing its might. K.J. Hill has got a touchdown pass already today. He is back on the field. Towards the top of your screen is Barrett. Looks to the bottom of your screen and finds Curtis Samuel. He's down near the 23-yard line. It'll bring up third down. Tackle made by Cameron Jeffries, the freshman from Poonsville, Ohio. Barrett's in a good rhythm right now, and he's using all of his receivers. Urban Meyer said he was going to use a lot of a lot of receivers out there, and he is. He's got them, and he's using them. Ohio State's been good today on third down. Four for four, converting on third today. Barrett on the roll on third. Pumps, now going to run. JT Barrett not going to get the first down this time. Stopped just shy of the 21 by Austin Valdez. So what they were trying to do, they had three receivers to the top side, then they took Curtis and set him in motion. They were going to run those guys off and bring Curtis back underneath. On fourth and two, looks like the Buckeyes up 21-7 are going to go. And I would too. Curtis Samuel in the backfield. Play action. Barrett throwing, almost intercepted by Alfonso Mack. It'll belong to Bowling Green, but they're very fortunate that Mack didn't pick that one off because he had a lot of running room, much like Brandon Harris did a on lot the touchdown. Room. And Kevin, I got to tell you, it's a second, almost a second pick, but again, watch the hitch on JT Barrett. Because he was hesitant, the ball comes out a little late, and the defender makes a play. One seven Ohio State leading Bowling Green 11 23 to go in the first half Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Mellon with Lisa Byington on the sidelines Buckeyes just turn it over on downs and so James Kanapke and Bowling Green back to work at the 21 yard line Kanapke to the air to the sideline and a little bit of running room for Josh Cleveland as he scoots up just shy of the 25, but Malik Hooker closed that door quickly. Malik Hooker is a young player. Keep your eyes on. Remember that name. He is, he's, I think he's going to be a really outstanding player. Second down at seven. 
Pressure from the backside. Kanapke over the middle into traffic, and it's complete to Scott Miller. How in the world did he get that ball in there to Miller at the 36? Well, he threaded the needle, and it looks like he was going to go somewhere else, but then at the last second, he just fired a bullet to Miller inside. There were Buckeyes and Falcons all over the place there, and somehow Miller got that ball. Big hole for Coppett. Coppett to the sideline and tracked down from behind by Damon Webb, but the best play on the ground all day for Bowling Green as Coppett bursts forward to the 36 and picks up 29. This is a good job by Webb, using an angle. And then Nettis used the sideline as your extra help, and his helmet came off after that. I wonder if he has to come out of the game for a play. Swing to the sideline, Miller with the catch. And he did have to come out for a play. Lee Cooker chasing him out. Bowling Green starting to get the offense going downhill a little bit. Yeah, and they ha and but it has to be punctuated with six points. If they don't get six, it's it doesn't mean a thing. Hafty with time looking for six deep in the end zone for T.O. Redding. But again, coverage provided by Denzel Ward, the fastest guy on this Buckeye team, and he was right on his hip. Yeah, so tight coverage again. <laughs> I didn't so, want to say good coverage. I figured you were anticipating that. Yeah. So, Kev, here, for me, like, okay, you know you're at a disadvantage athletically. So, look, you're going to have to kind of skew things a little bit. So, where's your picks? Where's your rubs? All that type of stuff. That's what you like to get guys off of them. Kanapke, quick toss and a catch by Pugh and a first down. To the 14, Ward tripped him up there. Keep things in tight. They go play action in the slant. So what does that do? On the slant, that makes the defender be on top of you. You can throw it to the inside if the play action works, and that time it did. Kanapke again, and this time Ward there to break up the slant. And that's on Kanapke. That ball was behind. If he had led him, that could have been a, a completion. Watch the ball. It's on the back side of him. Had he led him inside, Ward would not have been able to make that play. Second and 10 at the 14. Cop it back in at running back. And after quick toss off the hands of his tight end, Hunter Folkertsma, who turned before he secured the ball. Yeah, Folkertsma, this, that was completely on him because that ball should have been a completion. And so, again, it goes back to Kanapke because Kanapke has to be perfect with the ball. Not an easy thing to do. Big down right here. He's got to get a first down at least. Third and 10 at the 14. Pressure coming, Kanapke airing it for the end zone. Jump ball caught out of bounds. Great catch. Arion Conley had the coverage. It was Budavong who was back there to make the grab, but he couldn't keep his feet in play. Yeah, there's the catch. Feet are clearly out of bounds. Officials right on top of it. Sets up this fourth down. And now the field goal team will come on for Bowling Green. They came with a blitz on the inside to force Kanapke to make a quick decision. The ball was actually pretty well thrown. Just a little bit too high in the outside. Coverage again was right there, so that's making him have to throw the ball high and outside. And Worley was the guy who came on that blitz. 32-yard try, the first in the career of Jake Suter. Suter's first career field goal is good. And for the native of Toledo, his first career field goal comes in Ohio Stadium and brings Bowling Green to within 11. 21 to 10. 937 remaining in the second. 10 the lead for the Buckeyes. We welcome you back to the opener for the college football season here in Columbus. Kevin Kugler, Matt Millen, Lisa Byington, our entire BTN crew. Field goal a moment ago by Bowling Green has brought the Falcons to within 11. A 12 play drive and a 10 play drive. The last two drives for Bowling Green, Matt, but only three points. Yeah, that's and that's the problem. They needed to punctuate that other one with at least three, but they're going to have to start putting sixes up. <laughs> Bowling Green was offside on the kick. Andre Wilson. 30-yard line, zigging and zagging across the 35, and that flag down.
Offside, kicking team number 27. Five yard penalty but will be added to the end of the run. First down. Good field position for Ohio State here at the 41 yard line. Beginning September 24th, BTN Tailgate brings the show to your school with complete pregame coverage. All the local flair and fanfare. There's no better way to kick off your Saturdays beginning September 24th on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. Hopefully we'll run into those guys a few spots along the Big Ten Road this fall. Hopefully they throw the ball better than that animation. Hopefully they pick up the check. <laughs> on first down, Barrett on the pitch to Samuel. Samuel fights his way near midfield, just shy at the 49. Spinning up the middle, and that should be the first down, and it is. So Samuel gets a couple more, and Kyle Jr. on the stop. Kyle Jr.'s dad, EJ Jr., played 13 years in the NFL, I believe at the same time that you were roaming uh, the defensive EJ, field. Yeah, out of Alabama, outstanding player for a long time. round pick was EJ Jr. back in 1981. See how that official ran in there? That's because Ohio State made the substitution and it has to allow the defense to do it if they want. Dontre Wilson takes the direct snap. Dontre Wilson looking for a block and he's caught from behind. Nice flow by Trenton Green to get over there on a play that looked like it had the potential to go a long ways. Had some people out front but Trenton Green came from the backside and made another play. He's been active here in this first half. Yeah, went off banged up early in that first quarter and has come back. Does not seem to be any worse for the wear. Second and five, Wilson again. Wilson down inside the 38 with a first down to the 37. Austin Valdez on the stop. So now Dontre Wilson will leave the field. JT Barrett back to work. At the 38 on first down. Big hole for Weber, and Weber tripped up. The ball pops out. That is a fumble ruled on the field, and it's recovered by Bowling Green. Antonio Sotolongo recovers the fumble as ruled on the field. We'll watch it here. Well, uh, that top official is marking it at the 25-yard line. And that's the right call. Yeah. yeah, he's down. Rolling on the field. The runner is down at the 25-yard line. First down. There's the knee, there's the elbow, there's the spot. And there's not a fumble. Although I guarantee you, he'll be going through a lot of fumble drills this week. And the offensive Bowling Green has to make its way back to the bench now. They had rushed out onto the field. Off they go. First and 10 at the 25. Barrett off play action. Looking for six. Jump ball. And it is a touchdown. Noah Brown, what a grab for six. That was a great catch. But what I what I really like, when you watch this thing, watch the concentration. Goes up, he gets it. There's control. There's the, uh, the toe is down. Now look at this official right here. That's, now what he's gonna do? He's gonna turn around back because he's gonna get help from his, this is great officiating. Catch, toe is down, and he's to the side so he can't really see. He's looking for control all the way through the catch. Then he turns around and looks to the guy in the sideline whose job it is to watch to see if he's inbounds. That was really good. 
but the catch itself by Brown was outstanding. Fantastic grab. Great look here. Yeah, here's the catch, and there's the foot. So now he has to control it all the way through. And that's this, the, the official right in front of you, that's his job, is to keep his eyes on that all the way through. Now he will defer and go look backwards where the sideline official is watching all the way through to see if that foot was down. That was a great job of officiating. The ruling on the field was confirmed. It is a touchdown. There is no charge timeout. Great effort by Brown. Oh, Good fantastic coverage. effort. Ball was thrown. He put it up to play. They're trusting that Brown's going to come down. And he did just that. Durbin on for the extra point. And a 20 footwork as JT Barrett already four touchdown passes, 217 yards in the first half. Well, Brown also showed great concentration. For a guy who Coming broke off, both his yeah. tibia and fibula in a non-contact injury in the final week of camp last year to make it all the way back after missing last year. And his first career touchdown catch on a sunny Saturday to start the season in Columbus. Miller. Three yards deep, he'll take the knee. And the touchback for Bowling Green. Kevin, we talked at the start of the game that what you would notice is the skill set and the athleticism. And so there's protection and the first touchdown to Hill is all athleticism. Second one, same thing. Good protection. Curtis Samuel right down the middle. Again, athleticism. And the last one by Noel Brown, just the same thing. It's just a whole group of receivers all have great skill and they're taking advantage of it. 139, 345, 53 seconds, and 233, the times of the four touchdown drives for Ohio State today. Quick strike, very potent, very dangerous team as they grow up here in Columbus. Josh Cleveland dropped by Chris Worley after a seven-yard game. On second down, Kanapke with lots of time. He's able to find his receiver, T.O. Redding, who gets the first to the 42. Gary on Conley with the stop. Kanapke got some good protection there. And he stayed with his first read to the top side. It came wide open. A defender lost the coverage. First down, and he slings that one incomplete. Our United States Marine Corps leader of the game is Buckeye senior linebacker Joe Berger, former walk-on who now turns senior captain, earning a fourth varsity letter as a preferred walk-on. And that is a rarity in the 126 years a Buckeye football just doesn't happen. It's hard to research, we were told, just how many times that's happened. But the list of four letter winners as a walk-on is very limited. Well, that's just a testament to his ability to persevere. And he's got good skills. Not a real big guy, but he believes his eyes. On second down, Kanapke, and that's off the hands of more and incomplete as we check in with Lisa. Well, Joe Berger actually did have a couple of scholarship offers, and one of them was actually from Bowling Green, but he decided to walk on to Ohio State instead. In fact, he's got a history of walk-ons in his family. His dad walked on to Notre Dame's team in the 80s as an O lineman. His brother, his two uncles did the same. He chose Ohio State because he said, I wanted the name Joe Berger to actually be something here in Columbus. Well, it certainly has been that on third down. Jump ball deflected, and what an interception! Malik Hooker! with a spectacular interception on the sideline. Mentioned Malik Hooker's name earlier in the game. And that right there could be a BTN standout play because this is phenomenal effort. Now, most importantly, you didn't see where he came from. At the height, and then he just tracks the ball. That's a fantastic play. Now you're seeing the end of it. He started in the middle of the field. That's just, that's outstanding. Just end the voting right now. If there's a better BTN standout play, I, I don't want to see it. There's no way. Look at that interception. Yeah, that's, and that's the end of it. I wanted to see, I want to show you where the middle of it was. I mean, he's to the middle, the middle of the field, and that's called range. That's what you judge a player on. 
This kid, I was watching him on tape. He's got some Ed Reed in him. He's always around the football. He was a D1 prospect as a high school basketball player. He showed his vert leaping up to pick that one off with a great hands. Hands, concentration, athleticism. You won't see a finer pick. Barrett, late check down to Samuel. And Samuel tripped up at the 23 by Trenton Green. Yeah, I want you to see right down here. So, and what you're going to see is this is great range. So he's getting to the middle of the field now. His eyes take him right to the ball. That's just, that's great. I mean, that's just great stuff. It wasn't a double team. That's just reading it on the run, and that's outstanding range. Second and eight. Samuel down near the 27-yard line, just shy of that. And it'll bring up a third down. First career interception. They're all going to be downhill after that one. Yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of them for him. But none with that degree of difficulty. Yeah, well, he makes that stuff look easy, too. the sideline on third down. Noah Brown with the catch, and Noah Brown with the first down. Soto Longo on the tackle. That's an example of good, strong hands. Yeah, we reached out to catch the ball out in front of him and then hauled it in. Noah Brown's got, uh, you know, look, there's so many guys in this Ohio State team. Like we said at the start of the game, there are guys. Urban Meyer's been recruiting at or near the top of every recruiting every year, recruiting class. So. They've got a lot of players here. Barrett on the option to Samuel. Samuel upended with a flag down at the 49-yard line by Alfonso Mack. Would Barrett take a pop as he delivered that pitch on the option? Yeah, but what I liked about it is he drew the defender to him to eliminate one of the guys. A lot of quarterbacks will see it and they'll get rid of it right away, and that same defender can get in on a play. Holding. Offense, number 14, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. It's K.J. Hill. He of the big play earlier in, this, in the game, touchdown. So mark it back to the 35. So now a first and 13. Fifth penalty for 41 yards against the Buckeyes. Bowling Green, the most penalized team in FBS a year ago, also with five penalties. Barrett to the sideline, ball with the catch, backs down for an extra yard. Alfonso Mack at the 41 with the tackle. Samuel on second down has the first and into Bowling Green territory. He kind of glides, Matt, as a runner. Yeah, he's. They said they wanted 10 to 15 touches. He's got 12 in the first half. Yeah, so he's, which means they score here. You won't be seeing much of him anymore. Ball on the sidelines, and the tight end nudged out at the 42 by Soto Longo. Coming up at half, Dave, Jerry, and Howard have all the scores and highlights from week number one on the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Busy day for our crew in the studio here on BTN. We've got football all day and night. And Soto Longo on the sidelines attending to him. That could just be a cramp over there. <laughs> now he's up. Yeah. 
like a cramp. He's all right. Hopefully. And now second down and five at the 43. Ohio State already up 28 to 10, looking for more here before halftime. Weber slips through contact in the backfield. Weber picks through another hole and a first down. He ran out of his shoe, but he still moves the chains. Yeah, there's a term that's used. It's called good feet in the hole. Well, this is a picture of it. He keeps his balance. He's just always he's got good balance. That's the about, that's the fourth shoestring tackle that's gotten him today. That really was a shoestring. Had to put his shoe back on after they got pulled off. 11 carries, 94 yards in the debut of Mike Weber. Barrett. Swings it to Wilson, and Dontre Wilson, good tackle by Trenton Green. You talk about Ezekiel Elliott being gone from that running back spot, Matt. And Who? Yeah, that's, that you're starting to wonder that. <laughs> You've gotten between Weber and Samuel combined in the running game, 150 yards in this first half. Okay, so what does that speak to? That speaks to that offensive line, and we talked about that at the start of the game. This offensive line has the potential to be every bit as good as the one from a year ago. Second down and eight from the 30 to hand off to Wilson. Dontre Wilson adding to those rushing numbers. Gets to the 20-yard line. Dorian Hendricks on the stop. First down. Pretty impressive start for this Ohio State offense. Over 400 yards in the first half. Direct snap to Samuel, and Samuel out across the 15 and down at the 14. Yeah, this is what I expected from Ohio State. Just let, you know, they enjoy a size difference and an athletic difference up front. And just let those big guys just wear you out. And just keep on pounding them. Samuel again at quarterback. JT Barrett is in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Samuel fakes the pitch. A stutter step up the middle to get the first to the nine, and it's first and goal. I think he's over the 15 touch ceiling. He's right about ceiling. there. Yeah. yeah, he's right about there. Not that that was a ceiling. That was a suggested number. Yeah, well, he's going to have lots of touches this year. They're going to rely heavily on him for big plays, and he'll respond. Barrett, off play action, floats it for ball, one-handed grab, and it's out of bounds incomplete. Boy, what a try by Marcus Ball. Another good job of officiating. You see him drop his hat right there? That's to let you know he's out of bounds. It's a good job. It's, it's, it's been a really good crew. Ball, going to go up, he's going to get it. See, he's out of bounds. You'll see, I don't know if you'll see the hat come flying around there, but it did underneath. Second and goal to nine. Barrett up the middle, big hole, touchdown! Oh, you want to go man on me? <laughs> Great. I'll just put everybody outside and I'll run up the middle. That's just great awareness by JT Barrett. Fourteen play, eighty yard drive. The extra point is good. And this whole thing started with the impossible. The impossible interception made possible. And it goes from the difficult to the easy. The waltz into the end zone for six.
squad, a team that's been in the MAC championship game in the last three years, this Bowling Green squad, a they're, challenge, and Ohio State's handling it. They're going to be, that's going to be a good MAC team. That team will get better as the season goes on. Miller from the goal line. Miller trying the sideline, and he won't find much room there. 22 seconds until halftime. And James Kanapke, a little frustrated perhaps as he comes out. He's had some good moments today, but too many drives early, Matt, that they weren't able to cash in on. Yeah, and, and to be perfectly frank with you, he's had to be perfect. That's a tough position to be in against a team like Ohio State. I mean, they're just enjoying uh, an athletic advantage and a speed advantage. And so it puts all the pressure back on him to have to pinpoint that ball. On first down, delayed handoff to Coppett, and Coppett is buried in the backfield. Nowhere to go with Robert Landers right there to swallow him up. And they're not going to snap this one again. Halftime has come to Columbus. There were questions about what this Buckeye team would look like in 2016. Through one half, the reviews looking very positive. 35 to 10, Ohio State up at the break. To make here to start this second half, because in his words, we obviously are having trouble handling them on the outside one-on-one. -on -one. Interesting stuff, Lisa, thank you very much. Ohio State won the toss to start this game. They elected to defer, so with the 35 to 10 lead, Buckeyes are gonna get the football. And Bowling Green ready to kick it off. Nick Fields handling the kickoff duties. I'm a little surprised that they thought that they could run with Ohio State's receivers. That has not proven to be the case. Think. Yeah, that's called the understatement of the game. The pooch kick, fair catch called for and made at the 33-yard line. The Buckeyes will have good field position to start this first possession of the third quarter. Football on BTN is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people, find your agent at autoowners.com. And by tirerack.com, find, deliver, install, smarter. Kevin, the common theme and all that highlight package that we saw was outstanding offensive line play. Mm -hmm. Great protection, and in the in the last one with JT Parrott, a nice job of opening a hole up inside. So I think this is a major plus what they've seen today out of this Ohio State offensive line. On first down with ball the motion man. The give is to Weber. Weber fighting forward, and he's down. Near the 38-yard line, four-yard pickup on the play for Weber as he closes in on a 100-yard day. Yeah, so if you're a freshman and you're making your first start and your name is Michael Jordan, you know you're going to get dogged because of your name from your teammates, and, and you did. know you're going to have to play extremely well. I think this is a, you know, there's been some mistakes here today, but by and large, I think this is a huge positive for Jordan because he's shown all the athleticism that they hoped he had. Again, good protection for Barrett and able to drop it in to Curtis Samuel. My goodness, the touch on the pass, perfect from Barrett, who had all day to throw. There's an injured Buckeye down at the end of this play. Jamarco Jones, the left tackle, is down back at the line of scrimmage. Marco Jones having that left leg worked on. He dabbled a little bit, Matt, at right tackle, but coaches told us yesterday he's just most comfortable on that left side of the offensive line. Yeah, and they, hopefully he's okay for this Ohio State group because that guy, he's been playing well. He got his shot. Now you want to have staying power there. Keep in mind, the last few left tackles from Ohio State, they're high draft picks. And he has what it takes to be another one of them. You're going to see him on the top side, 74. And he just got run by. 
Huh. Walking off all right, looks like. Now, this is an area of concern for Urban Meyer after his front line guys. He told us yesterday, look, all five of my starting offensive line, they're NFL-type guys. But when you get to that second team, there's a little bit more of a question as to what exactly you have there. Now, Isaiah Prince has moved over to left tackle, and Brandon Bowen comes in at right tackle right now after the injury. Yeah, they liked Bowen, too. There's Weber fighting his way down near the 21-yard line. And it's games like this, Matt, where you're in a comfortable position from the score standpoint that you can work on that depth in your offensive line. Yeah, I and mean, you'd like to see it as, you know, see, you have to keep one thing in mind. As Barrett pumps with time over the middle, Samuel with the catch into the end zone, touchdown! Not a great throw, but a great catch. Thrown behind him, and he has that kinesthetic sense where he's able to turn the body around as he's running with a nice catch behind him and into the end zone. Second touchdown catch of the day for Curtis Samuel. And the playmaker making plays again, just a minute 15 into the third. The extra point is good. And Curtis Samuel, six catches, 152 yards, two touchdowns, 67 yards rushing. Not a bad debut. Five had two of them under his belt. JT Barrett, by the way, not to sleep on him. 16 of 23, 302 yards, five touchdowns, only averaging 19 yards per completion. One yard deep in the end zone, and the knee will be taken for the touchback. So now you're bowling green. You're down 42 to 10 early in the third quarter. What are you working on here? What are you looking to accomplish in these final two quarters? Okay, so you're down 32 points, but in the first half, you did move the ball a few times. Now, what they have to do is work on finishing the drives. They weren't able to finish some drives, and they left points off the board down there. So. I think they just do the same thing. Forget about the score. They're going against a great team. That's fine. You know that going in. But go ahead and prove to yourself that you can score against these things and finish these drives. From the 25, Kanaski in the gun on first down. To the air, dropped by Pudovall. Would have been a first down had he been able to pull it in. Instead, second and 10. Yeah, that's the third drop. Uh, and, the, and the throw is exactly where it had to be. Yeah, you're going to walk out of this if you're James Kanapke with a lot of positives I would, I moving would forward. So. Yep. Second down, that one not one of the positives through behind T.O. Redding, and it's third down. Yeah. Redding had a step, and see, they're, they're running those inside. You can take the coverage will still be on the top side. So you throw it underneath, and you have a chance for a completion. That's why he's been going with this. Last six attempts, Kanapke has not been able to connect. A couple of those were dropped. Pressure coming. Kanapke over the middle, and he threw it behind Miller, and Damon Webb almost had an interception drop right into his lap. Yeah, only because it was thrown behind him, because Webb was beat. That ball, if it's thrown out front, it's got a chance to be a big play. Now they're going to bring the pressure, and he sees it. He's got to throw. See how it's behind there? Miller had a chance, man. He he had the coverage beat. And after three incompletions, Bowling Green will punt it away. A line drive dart of a punt that gets batted at about the 35-yard line. Mike Weber running back for Ohio State in his Buckeye debut. And what a, see, what a start he's had to the season. Yeah, and what you've seen is great feet in the hole. You know you were going to get the power. And he shows that he runs through tackles. And he also has good speed. This is my favorite run that he had in the first half. And there's a lot, some guys, some runners just can run with lots of people around them. They just can get kind of through that mud in there. 
Weber's one of them. Maurice Claret rushed for 175 yards in his debut in 2002. Weber with 102 right now. So Barrett and company back to work with a 42 to 10 lead. Dontre Wilson reverses his field and Wilson to the 40. The last series, or right before the last series, you heard Lisa Byington talking about the decision they went with man-to-man -man coverage and it didn't hold up. So what they did in that first series of the second half was go to more zone coverage, and they just got blistered with that. Weber got a block. Nice move by Weber. And Weber into Bowling Green territory at the 49. 11 yards for Weber as Trenton Green comes over to make the stop. Weber shows that shiftiness and patience that doesn't really match with his class as a redshirt freshman. Runner's patience and great feet in the hall. I mean, he can, he can redirect. There he is again with a flag down. Weber pushing the pile to the 45-yard line. Should note that Jamarco Jones, Matt, back out on Illegal the field. formation. Offense, five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So good to see Jamarco Jones back out there after that injury a little while ago. The offensive line back intact with its five starters. You see Elf line, number 65 right there. He had been a guard. They moved him to center. And when they moved him inside, most centers are they are the organizational center of every offensive line. There's no different with Elf line. Barrett over the middle, finding Samuel down to the 49-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage. Trenton Green on the stop. So Elf line's one of those guys that makes all the calls up front, gets everybody on the same page. It's the communication guy, so he starts inside and everything goes outside. But once everybody's on the same page, you have that kind of, those kind of athletes, things usually work out. On second down, Elfman picked up a good block there as he provided a little protection for Barrett, who found Curtis Samuel. And you talk about Elfline, it's been a long time since May when Pat Elfline couldn't even hold two pounds. He had this pain in his shoulder. Turns out he had a cyst the size of a coin pressing on the nerve in his shoulder, had to have it removed, and all of a sudden, things started to go back into place again. Weber behind Elfline, and Jordan gets down to the 29-yard line. You watch it, Pat Elfline, number 65, right in the middle of your screen. That's just a nice job, and so, if you're a defender and you're gonna take a side like that, he, he will actually block yourself. So Elfline does a nice job of kicking his hips, getting his hands on him, and opens the hole. In essence, he just ushers the guy the way yeah, he's already going. That's all you do. Barrett. Off the play action, trying to get it to Ball. A little bit behind Marcus Ball as he was turning the opposite way, and it's third down. Kev, the one thing that's impressive to me just watching them is Ohio State in their preseason camp only had one day of, of heavy padded practice. Um, and they had the pads on, but live practice. As far as tackling goes. But tackling and all the hitting. And they have done a great job of keeping their pad level down low. That's good coaching. Weber. On third down and short, he's got the first. And Weber to the 26-yard line. And it, that was interesting when we were talking with Luke Fickle yesterday, and he was kind of walking us through the fall, talking about how only one day that they were really in live tackling. He said we did individual tackling drills one-on-one, right. -on -one, but he says, you know that, Matt, that's not the same. Yeah, and, and it isn't. And it's the same thing for the offensive line, because the only way for them to do it, lots of time. Checking to down the ball, and ball leaping into the air. Trying to hurdle the defenders, and Ball showing some impressive hops, but cannot get over the second. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> he just vertical them right over his head. Marcus Milton was looking down, and all of a sudden had to look up.
Dontre Wilson now in to take the direct snap. On second down and one, Wilson got a block from Weber. Cuts it back, and Wilson inside the 10 where it'll be first and goal. One more look at Marcus Ball. That's just that's just good ups. I mean, he just went right over. First and goal at the seven. Dontre Wilson again in and movement on the right side of the line. Ball start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Can a false start in that situation be as simple as saying it's a different cadence that you're than you're listening to with Wilson back there instead of Barrett? Uh, normally, I would say yes. Except Dontre Wilson's been back there quite a bit all through training camp in here, so that's that's just an anticipation thing. And that's you know, we're talking about how well this offensive line has played, but they're going to go back. There's a lot of mistakes in there. There have been a lot of mistakes, but I mean, by and large, it's been a big positive. Game one as well. A.T. Barrett back in. Barrett on the option. Samuel with the corner. Got a block. Into the end zone. Touchdown. J.T. Barrett runs that play so well. He, uh, he makes the defender come and get him. And that eliminates a guy who's able to make it, get in the tackle. Watch how he makes it. He draws it to him. And then he's out on the edge, and Sammy uses his speed, and it's six quick. Nine oh three to go in the third. The extra point caps the ten play, sixty-five yard scoring drive. Urban Meyer said, "We don't measure ugly; we measure go hard." They've gone to the nine yards rushing, three total touchdowns for Curtis Samuel. Curtis, total service, right there. Running the ball, catching the ball, whatever you need him to do. And the kick several yards deep will be down for the touchback as we go down to Lisa Bynes. Kevin, one of the storylines today is Urban Meyer playing against the program, Bowling Green, that gave him his head start, or his head coaching start, I should say. And David Bautista is here, a wide receiver who was on Urban Meyer's first team. Did you think he would get this far? Way back in BG? Yeah, I really did. It was it was pretty obvious when he first got with us. Uh, because when he first got to our locker room, he said, he said, hey, I'm Urban Meyer, guys. You're in for a world of hurt tomorrow. I'll see you at 5 a.m. and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get a shot. We have to get a shot of his shirt. So he's a bowling green grad, but you clearly are all about Urban Meyer today. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, I flew in here from Los Angeles, California to see this game because it meant that much to me, and Urban Meyer means that much to me. What kind of impression did he leave for you and this team? Um, well, overall, I think that he taught us to really, to really believe in ourselves more than, than anybody else because that's the only thing that you have going on your side because everyone else is usually not going to believe in you. So if you can really truly believe in yourself and come together as a team, which he preaches, and not just a team but a family, you can go a long way, and that's why he's been so successful. Malik Hooker with his second interception of the day, and Hooker on the run, weaving up the field, and Hooker down to the 22. That one might have been a little easier than his first, which was a BTN standout play, but certainly just as effective for Ohio State to get the turnover again. Kevin, he, he makes it look easier. This is not an easy thing to come from the middle of the field and track that ball and then basically steal it out of his hands. And here's the first half. He makes this look easy. First he skies, and then he has the wherewithal to be able to make the catch. Both of these coming from the middle of the field. I told you he has some Ed Reed in him. I told you that yesterday when we were watching tape. This kid, he's got a feel for the ball. He's always around the football. You can't teach that. You either have it or you don't, and he's got it. You were asking Ohio State coaches and players yesterday who you were looking forward to seeing, and the coaches were saying, oh, Malik Cooker, anxious yeah. to see what he can do. We've seen what he can do. JT Barron. Gets away from the rush over the middle, looking for Paris Campbell, and it's incomplete as we check back in with Lisa Bynt. A lot going on there. One last thing, your favorite Urban Meyer story real quick. All right, so I think my favorite Urban Meyer story was 
So after we went into the locker room and he introduced our, himself to us, and he said, I'll see you in the morning, we met him at the indoor facility at 5 in the morning. He basically set up a whole bunch of, um, a whole bunch of obstacles for us for three hours straight, set up trash cans all around the facility, and said, you can't throw up and you can't go to the bathroom. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, right? Yeah. Right? And the rest is history. Thank you. Yeah, no no <laughs> and the pass complete. Barrett finding K.J. Hill. Samford on the coverage and the tackle. 11-yard gain. Hill coming up, checking his shoulder out a little bit right there. Well, as Lisa mentioned at the top of the broadcast when talking about Urban Meyer and Bowling Green, and as he described it to us yesterday, he was a nut job. Oh, yeah. At the, as soon as I asked him, he, he didn't hesitate at all. He goes, I was a nut job. I said, like what? He's like, and he pretended he got put in cuffs and taken away. He goes, that kind of a nut job. On first down, Barrett on the roll. And Barrett will throw this one away as we go back downstairs to Lisa Byington. David Bautista, part of that 2001 team, and, and those seniors, Urban Meyer won't forget. It's why he keeps a photo of the, the 01 Falcon senior class hanging in his house. He says it's always been one of the first things he hangs from his move to Utah, to Florida, back to Ohio. David Bautista in the lower left of the photo. His wife, Shelly Meyer, even added that team was like our firstborn child. and We will always have a special place in our hearts for him. Well, and it's obvious that the feeling is mutual. Guys flying in from all over the country to see Urban Meyer's Ohio State team play their Bowling Green team. Barrett for the end zone open touchdown, Dontre Wilson. Touchdown number six is a touch pass. And that ties his own school record with six passing touchdowns. Well, I mean, if you really want to be picky, he has seven today. Of course, one of them went to Bowling Green. <laughs> Extra point is good. 56 to 10, Ohio State. A career high in passing yards for that young man, J.T. Barrett. Stop with Ed Warner. Is that the end of the day for JT Barrett? 349 yards, a new career high. Six passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. You couple that with the news that Joe Burrow is warming up on the sidelines. Deductive reasoning falls into play. You may have seen the end of JT Barrett's day. And out of the end zone. Miller trying to find a little running room. Breaks one tackle. And Miller out of bounds shy of the 20-yard line. Next weekend, it's another great Saturday of Big Ten football at noon. Both Rutgers and Purdue will take center stage. Then at 3.30, it's Wisconsin and Northwestern both in action. And we're back in primetime as you'll see North Carolina and the Illini for the battle for the Cyhawk between Iowa and Iowa State. Lisa, Matt, and I will be in Iowa City next weekend starting at noon Eastern, BTN, BTN to go. Go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your market. I'm anxious to watch Lovey Smith's team. I think they're going to be a much improved team. Tough test out of the gates. Yeah. For Illinois next weekend. On first down, looking for a little running room is Coppett. And Coppett not able to find much. Gets a yard to the 21 yard line where Jerome Baker is waiting. Second down and nine. Top it again, but all kinds of traffic, and he's buried by Nick Bosa. As we check in for what seems like forever, Mike Hall in Chicago's got a Safe Flight Studio update. That has been nip and tuck all day long for Northwestern. There was a flag on that run by Coppett. After illegal formation, offense, five players in the backfield. The penalties decline, third down. Mentioned at the end of that play, Nick Bosa was involved in it. That is, of course, the younger brother of Joey Bosa, the true freshman. And they have a lot of high hopes for what he'll do here. Kanapke in some trouble, nobody open. Able to elude the rush. Kanapke on the run to the sideline, and it's broken up. Garyon Conley got over to jar it loose, 
And it's fourth down. Yeah, Conley hit it with his hand. That's great hand placement and a nice job of ball awareness by Conley. So Gary on Conley gets over to break it up. Bowling Green will punt it away with 6.45 to go in the third. Andre Wilson back deep as Joe Davidson comes on to punt it away. Good punt. Wilson backs up inside the 20 yard line. Wilson spins free. Trying to reverse his field and hanging on for dear life to make the tackle for Bowling Green is Greg Hohenstein. Hohenstein had three shots at him that time. Missing the first time, missing the second time. He came back for the third time. He got him. Third time was the charm and the debut of the career of Joe Burrow about to happen. He won the backup job in the spring. Tim Beck's the quarterback coach. He said his accuracy is his best attribute. Played well at the end of spring practice after redshirting last year. Mr. Football in Ohio in 2014 at Athens High School. On first down, the handoff. Looking for a little bit of running room up the middle, Demario McCall. McCall out to the 30. Burrow to the air, finds the tight end, A.J. Alexander, and the freshman from Virginia with the grab out of bounds just shy of the 35. Sets up third and manageable. All they want to do right now, that these are the backups in now, is just A, get them experience, and B, move the chains. You don't have to have big plays, just move the chains. Burrow, incomplete. Looking for Austin Mack and the freshman to freshman combo. Incomplete, and it's fourth down. And the punt team's going to come on. For Ohio State. So on comes Cameron Johnston and the Buckeye punt squad. First punt of the day for Ohio State. Bowling Green, a little bit of confusion as to who's returning. They ran one on the field and now changing out. It'll be Scott Miller who has to wear 99 because there's two 21s on the kick team. So Miller lets that one go and it'll be down inside the 20-yard line where Bowling Green will have it first down and 10, trailing 56 to 10 after the 48-yard punt. Alongside Matt Millen, I'm Kevin Kugler. As far as season debuts go, Ohio State's not going to have a whole lot to complain about today. Uh, yeah, but... Uh Coach Meyer and his staff will find some stuff. There, yeah, sure there, was, there were some mistakes there. I mean, there were mistakes, and there will be correctable mistakes. But I think, by and large, they're going to have to be very happy with the play of their offensive line. All the skilled people that they wanted to get in and get touches, all of them responded well. And J.T. Barrett, this is his show. And that's Urban Meyer's words at the start of the game. He said it's his show, and you sh it showed today. Little bit of room and tripped up at the 35 yard line. Nice little dart by Josh Cleveland. They'll mark him at the 32. Cleveland again. This time, Cleveland not finding much running room to the outside. Jay Sean Cornell, the reason why he couldn't turn that corner. I think if you came to this game, and I, I think this game met its expectations. I think Ohio State is, you know, what, what you hope they were going to be, what they could show against a MAC team. And I think what you're going to see out of this Bowling Green team is a successful season. I just think, you know, they're overmatched. It's just it's that simple. And the pass incomplete over the middle looking for Miller. 
And for Ohio State, three returning starters on defense. Tyquan Lewis, Raquan McMillan, Garyon Conley. So eight new faces out there for the Buckeyes. And for new defensive coordinator Greg Schiano, an introductory period now over the season underway. That's a nice mix, though. The talent you have at Ohio State with the mind of Greg Schiano. Yeah, and, and the recruiting classes that Urban Meyer have brought to him. And so, yeah, Luke Fickle, Luke Fickle has, is also here and uh, both co-defensive coordinators. Yeah, and, and he and Greg Schiano, they're on the same page. And Greg's not trying to reinvent the wheel. He knows they have stuff. And the sack. Kanapke is dropped on the play. Jalen Holmes was the first guy there. Devon Hamilton made the push late to close it out. There's Greg Schiano, associate head coach, defensive coordinator. He's the co-defensive coordinator. He's upstairs, and Luke Fickle is downstairs. And you asked both of them about why one is up and one is down. Yeah, and, and they both gave the same answer. And so Luke knows this team. Luke Fickle understands the, the guy, and, so, and, and as a field guy downstairs, and he can get to them right away and communicate. And Greg Schiano upstairs more with a, a, a wider big picture thing and can see things up top and, and relay it down. It's going to work well for them. That sack a moment ago that ended the drive, the first sack of the game for Ohio State, 36th straight game with a sack as we go downstairs to Lisa. Well, Urban Meyer even compared the, the hiring and having Shiano and Fickle to when he hired Greg Matheson and, and Charlie Strong at Florida. And he told those two at the time, I don't care how you work it out, just work it out. Like, I don't care who calls the plays or the defense, just work it out. And he knew that those two and Fickle and Shiano, when he did it here at Ohio State, that they would work it out. And so far, they've worked it out. They certainly have. Yeah, well, there's some talent here to help them. Too. Yeah, that flags down. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Isn't that nice? Yeah, you know. I'll start. Offense, number 54. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. It's really weird, Matt. You know, if you study football at the professional or the college level, the best teams, more often than not, have the best players. And and generally the best coaches. It's funny how that works. Coach John Madden told me years ago when we were on the bus driving across the country, he said, you know, you turn into a really good coach when you have really good players. <laughs> on the option keep, Burrow turns it upfield to the 24-yard line after the penalty gets four of the five yards back. Isaiah Lunsford on the stop. And like you said, there's plenty of work to do. It is just game oh, yeah. one. But Ohio State, a lot to be pleased about in this opener. There's still a quarter to play in this game, and already 56 points on the board. Well, they have they have Tulsa next week, and in two weeks, they've got Oklahoma, who's struggling right now with Houston. I think they're down. Burrow slings it over the middle, looking for Samuel. And Curtis Samuel, two yards shy of the first down, tackled by Nate Locke. Ohio State, we've talked about it, 16 starters lost from a year ago. Five of those players, though, went top 20 in the National Football League draft. It's only the second time that any school has had that happen in the common draft era. Give up the middle for the first down to the 36-yard line. You mentioned those first-round picks. You talked Joey Bosa, Ezekiel Elliott, Eli Apple, Taylor Decker, Aaron Lee. Not to pull one name out of that hat, but Ezekiel Elliott in Dallas with the injury to Tony Romo and Dak Prescott now starting as a rookie quarterback. Ezekiel Elliott's going to have an opportunity to be the focal point of that offense for a while. Yeah, and the good news for him is, is that offensive line down Dallas is a pretty darn good offensive line. And they've spent a lot of time and high draft picks building that line over the years. Samuel in trouble in the backfield, but he's able to turn the corner. And Samuel gets positive yardage out of what looked like nothing. And he's out to the 42, a gain of six. Yeah, but he came up a little hitch there in his get along. You see that? Down there on the sideline. Are you surprised he's still out there in the game at this point? Yeah, get him out of there. He shouldn't be in there. And he leaves. Weber returns. And Weber with the carry. 
Weber down near a first down across the 45 yard line. Looks like it's going to be about a half yard short. Man, what's his numbers now? He's at about, he's over a buck 20. What is he? Weber's at 129 on 17 yeah, carries. 130 yards for his debut. That's a nice day. And on third down, another carry for Weber. Weber tripped up as he tries to turn the corner. It was Ben Hale, the native of Columbus, Ohio, St. Charles prep grad here in Columbus, who comes back, makes the tackle at a stadium I'm sure he's visited more than once in his lifetime. First down and 10 at the 49. for some running room up the middle is Demario McCall. A lot of great players have come through this field here. In the, used to be the horseshoe, not anymore. <laughs> they, they've had some great, great players come through and Heisman Trophy winners and Outland winners and all kinds of other winners. But my favorite is Jack Tatum. I love Jack Tatum. I love watching him when he's here at Ohio State. And, I loved him in the pros for years, and of course I got to know him as he played with the Raiders. And what a great play. Burrow showing some good footwork in the backfield and on the edge. And Burrow's got the first down to the 35-yard line. Nice run by the freshman Joe Burrow. First down for the Buckeyes, as we will likely not see another snap in this third quarter here in Columbus. With the quarterback walking away from the huddle, I think that's a safe bet. Timeout. Oh, a timeout. Player on the defense. There's an injured Falcon. So they stop the clock. Now they'll wind it, and we have reached the end of the third quarter of play. Some of the highlights of this one involve Malik Hooker. Two interceptions today. You'll find none finer than that one right there. It was a little faster in real time, but it's still just as spectacular. Malik Hooker with two picks leading the Buckeyes. Demario McCall into the end zone for the first time in his career. Once he got on the outside, there was nobody there to run with him. He just ran away from everybody. Thirty-six yards for McCall. Durbin on for the extra point, and the kick is good. So he gets his first touchdown catch. Joe Burrow with his first touchdown pass, and it's sixty-three to ten. Well, there's not much to really say here. The good blocking on the outside, and it's just he's faster than everybody else on the field. Just runs away from everybody. A subdued celebration for your first career touchdown. Got a good block from James Clark on that edge to spring him. And after that, as you said before, execution and athleticism. Yeah. There was execution, there was athleticism, and there's another touchdown. And there's 63 points hung on Bowling Green. And still 14.50 to go. Durbin ready to kick it off. And the kick into the end zone for the touchback. Tim Tebow recently said he's trying baseball. His former head coach approves. I've, I've been in a foxhole with Tim, so I know there's many things I've seen him do that most people can't do.
This is not something he's been working on for a month. You know, Tim doesn't do that. Tim's been grinding for a long time and maybe not in the public eye, but he's been working hard at this and and he's got a very nice skill set. You know, to say, can he be a major league player? You're talking about the elite of the elite. My gut feeling he gets on a roster. Well, there was a lot of consternation when Tim Tebow announced he was going to try baseball. I never quite understood the how it impacted anybody's life other than Tim Tebow's as to whether or not he decided to go after a baseball career or not. But good luck to him as he moves forward. Yeah, the hot rumor was the Braves were looking at him. Maybe His tryout was the other day, and the response was mixed. Yeah, mixed. I yeah. think that's a good way to put it. Second down and eight at the 27. Time and the pass incomplete off the hands of Pudavong. That's the fourth or fifth drop we've seen today. That ball could have been thrown better, but Pudavong should have caught it. <laughs> he had his hands on it. Third down and eight. For Mike Jinks and Bowling Green, this is just a matter of let's try to get some things that work, try to figure out how we can improve for the games to come. They play North Dakota, then Middle Tennessee State, then they're at Memphis. Benapke in some trouble, and he's sacked. Second sack of the day, and the first in the career of Nick Bosa. Looked a lot like his brother there. Got the edge and just kept on coming. Yeah, you can see him. He's right in front of 38. He's right over here. You can watch. He's going to get the edge. Get upfield. Now gets inside. That's That looks a lot like his brother, to be honest with you. He saw that brace right there on his right knee. He was limited early in drills in the fall because of the knee injury he suffered last year. Kind of a precautionary measure, but the freshman and the roar that came from the crowd when they realized it was another Bosa wreaking havoc in the backfield. As the punt fielded at the 35, that ball fumbled and covered up by the Buckeyes. So Ohio State dodges the turnover bug there as it's pounced upon by Smith. And a timeout here in Columbus. 60. Sixty three to ten Ohio State with 13 22 remaining in the fourth Kevin Kugler alongside Matt Miller with Lisa Byington on the field can't ask for a better day from a weather standpoint for football here in Columbus it has been perfect all day long and Ohio State looking awfully good here in their season debut as Demario McCall gets a yard enjoy the lighter side of Big Ten sports on BTN's new late night show sports light with Mike Hall. Each week, join Mike along with correspondents in New York and Los Angeles as they hang out with your favorite Big Ten athletes, coaches, alums, and fans. Don't miss Sports Light with Mike Hall. Premieres Wednesday night, September 14th, only on BTN. Second down and eight at the 31-yard line. Joe Burrow in at quarterback for Ohio State. He had a touchdown pass just a little while ago on the last possession. And on the give, Johnny Dixon across the 35 down to the 37-yard line. Tackle made there by Brandon Harris, who had the pick six to start this game. Bowling Green led this game at one point, seven to nothing. That was about uh, 650 yards of <laughs> offense ago. Yes, and 63 to three on the scoreboard ago. Uh, Ohio State over 700 yards of offense. Third down and two. Shrugging off a tackler up the middle, gets the first down to the 41 yard line. Mario McCall on the carry, Dorian Hendricks on the stop. Ohio State, you mentioned over 700 yards of total offense, Matt. They are almost. Well, they're assuming they get a couple more yards. They're going to set a school record for total offense in this ball game. What is their record? The record is 718 yards against Mount Union in 1930. They might be. Yeah, they're one yard short. They can't. That's terrible. How can they only be one yard short? They should have been ahead of that by now. Well, luckily they have 11:25 <laughs> to go to get that one yard. Urban Meyer seems very, very concerned about this record. <laughs>
Cole with the carry, oh. the record, and more. Adding to it as he's down to the 45 of Bowling Green and the most prolific offensive game in Ohio State history is this one. Ohio State with a school record now, 731 yards total offense. Mount Union gone and now forgotten in the record books. 1930 and now 2016. I was, uh, I remember that game. The 1930 Mount Union. We had Ohio State the next week. Yeah. <laughs> the tough tape to watch. <laughs> tough tape. From the 45 on first down, here's Johnny Dixon. Dixon hurdling a man, then he gets pummeled at the 42 yard line by Brandon Harris as we go to my call in Chicago for another Safe Light Studio update. Mike, thank you very much. Northwestern down one with two minutes to go. Oh, my goodness. The drama here not quite as intense <laughs> yeah. as Joe Burrow floats that pass a little too tall looking for James Clark. Why you would ever throw a ball now is beyond me. <laughs> well, Players want to play, but coaches, I'm sure, just want to progress this game as much as they can. Yeah, but you do want to see players in different situations, and this is the only time you have for a game situation. They won't push the ball down the field. Like, you know, you're not going to take a shot anymore, but I can still understand why they'd still throw it. When you have fewer conference games this year in the Big Ten Conference, you've got only the three non-conference, and then right into conference play to start off October. Burrow. Shrugging away from pressure, and he fires over the middle to Terry McLaurin. That was nice. Now, they've been money on third down. That's their 10th conversion, I think. Uh, 10, 10 out of 13 today on third down and for Ohio State. So they've been they've been really good in third down conversion. You're, if you're good in third down, you're going to be good, period. That was a nice throw. Joe Burrow made a lot of those throws in the spring, Matt. They were really pleased with his progress through the spring game. Getting some extended time here in this one. From the 31 on first down. McCall again. McCall on ankle tackle made as he tried to break up field by Nigel Ballou. Elijah Ballou able to get the tackle on McCall. McCall's got some quicks. He gets through the hole pretty quick into that second level fast. A little bit different style. Nice little changeup. Second down and one. 8.38 and counting to go in this one. Ohio State salted this one away a long time ago. Behind 349 yards from JT Barrett and six touchdown passes. Here's Burrow on the keep, and Burrow with the first down. There's certainly some things to like from the game of Joe Burrow. Oh, yeah. He shows some good skill. I, when he's in the pocket, that last throw he had, that was a, a third down. He put it right where it needed to be. You could see you know, why they're excited about him. He has some run skill. He's needs to you know he needs to be in this offense more obviously but there's there's a lot of good tools to work with there great football family for Joe Burrow is that Jimmy the defensive coordinator at Ohio with Frank Solich the head coach first and ten at the 15 yard line call trying to fight his way forward down at the 14 yard line just a yard gain before Grant Coffey makes the stop Frank Soul's a good coach. Mm -hmm. All he ever did was win 10 games. <laughs> At the time, it didn't seem enough. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> He's done a nice job. Speaking of Mac schools like Bowling Green, Ohio will be one of the schools challenging Bowling Green in the Mac this year. Mac's always been a, that's always been a good conference. Always. Good league. Second down and nine. 
Fumbled snap, and Burrow just has to dive on top of that one. Moving forward, Ohio State will face off against Tulsa, and then that big showdown in Norman against Oklahoma in two weeks. It doesn't look like Oklahoma's doing them every, any favors, though. Looks like Houston's going to beat them. My guess is that uh, Urban Meyer won't take them lightly, even with a loss on their Ooh, schedule. No, 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 no. <laughs> then they get a week off before Rutgers, Indiana, and at Wisconsin. Their next five games here as we crack the seal on the 2016 season. I think Paul Chris has done a really nice job at Wisconsin. I think that's a well-coached team. I think he's settling into you know what his brand of football is going to be. He's breaking a new quarterback. I think he's a good coach. Good coaches in this Big Ten. Third down and 11. McCall, a hole. Nice cut. And McCall diving for the pylon. Is he in? Touchdown. Second time McCall has found the end zone here late, and it's 69 to 10. Yeah, nice, nice job of awareness. Now remember that pylon, that's six. So he's in bounds. He hasn't gone out bounds. Out of bounds. The the ball is still in bounds. It touches the pylon at six. And Ohio State continuing to pour it on. Eleven play, seventy-one yard drive took over seven minutes off the clock. Durbin's extra point is good. 70 to 10, Ohio State, 6-10 remaining in the ballgame. Life's going right today for the Ohio State Buckeyes, 70 to 10. First time the Buckeyes have scored 70 points. Since September 21st, 2013 against Florida A&M. First time they did it in a season opener since they beat Rice in 1996. That was a 70-7 ball game there. There's Miller. And Miller down at the 28-yard line. And a timeout here in Columbus with 6.02 remaining in the ball game. And Bowling Green and Ohio State, a 60-point game here in Columbus. Back with the remaining fourth quarter moments in a moment. Back here in Columbus at Ohio Stadium, new quarterback on the field for Bowling Green, and it'll be the freshman James Morgan, just 19 years old. Out for the first time. Quick toss to the sideline and a little running room for Marquise Zimmerman as we go downstairs to Lisa Byington. Ohio State on the cutting edge of technology. Maybe that's why they're looking so good here today. Strength and conditioning coach Mickey Marotti is the one who kind of leads this. Ohio State uses about nine to ten different ways to track an athlete's health and conditioning. And actually this year and just within the last year, they've kind of developed two new and most recent messes to help to eliminate some soft tissue injuries and of course urban meyer really good friends with mickey marotti and, and one of the reasons why he brought him in from florida because he's been so instrumental in just being ahead of the game in terms of uh, keeping the players healthy and, and the program on the cutting edge one method can track a player's muscle activation to let a coach know if a hamstring or a quad muscle is being overworked these kind of devices that phone there will usually be a, a, an intern with a smartphone that provides immediate feedback to the coaches and the players during practices. That chart you saw at the end, the green and the yellow, measures stress levels. Uh, yellow is, is a color that, that alerts the coaching staff if they're at practice that there is, a, there is a high stress level. Now, green is good. This is significant. For example, Urban Meyer and the staff saw green and a player all week, and then all of a sudden when Thursday came, he was off the charts as a warning yellow, and they realized this player was dealing with some off-the-field stresses, and the fact his first game day was close, he hadn't even played at Ohio Stadium yet. So that's what they attributed, the change in stress levels for that one player. It's really kind of interesting. Oh, it was fascinating. You know, Lisa and I went and, and went through the whole process yesterday with, with Mickey, and 
and he was talking about how this has been applied to guys like Marshawn Lattimore, who made it through camp for the first time without hurting his hamstrings. And they had these little sensors that he wore inside his game pants that would indicate when, as he's practicing, his hamstrings are under extra strain or less strain, and they'd know when to back off and when to increase the load. It was just a fascinating scientific discussion. I didn't have, understand any of it, but it made a lot of sense <laughs> to him, so that's all that mattered. And it made sense to Lisa, which is why she told the story. It'll be interesting to see what happens when exams, exam time starts. <laughs> yellow, yellow, yeah. yellow, yellow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's, I did, we didn't find out what the color on the scale was beyond yellow. I assume there's maybe I think it's re red. Really red? Yeah. yeah. At Ohio State, red's usually a good color, but not on that chart. <laughs> Carry up the middle. There's Bosa with the tackle again for the Buckeyes. Bowling Green still in their pace. And on third down, on the roll, tipped and intercepted with room to run up the sideline and nobody going to get in the way. All the way in for six. And it's Rajay Burns. A pick six for Rajay Burns and everybody gets a touchdown. His chart is green. <laughs> yeah, this right here is just right place, right time. And Burns does a nice job of just taking it to the house. Rajay Burns huffing and puffing a little bit there. But a big smile on his face as he's in for six. And a 76 to 10 Ohio State lead. And the extra point makes it 77 to 10. The most points by Ohio State in, a, in the fourth quarter. I want to welcome those who've been watching Maryland win there. Opener earlier today here, Ohio State leading 77-10. Kevin Kugler, Matt Miller, and Lisa Byington in Columbus, Ohio, where the Buckeyes have scored an awful lot of points. And a pick six a moment ago gives them another touchdown for Urban Meyer in the debut. 77 points today, the most scored by Ohio State since 1950. And as you sit at home and record watch continues and you start thinking, well, gosh, are they going to break the all-time Buckeye scoring record today? They are not. Um, 1916 Buckeye squad put 128 on Oberlin. They only have 51 more points. That's not a big deal. They have all three timeouts. <laughs> 3.23 to go. JT Barrett today with his most productive day from a yardage standpoint in an Ohio State uniform. Quick toss to the edge down at the 31 yard line. Let's take a look at our Benjamin Moore game changer and how we just is an excuse to just to show this interception. Oh, Why not? Yeah, Malik Cooker just outstanding. Outstanding play all game long. And that was just uh, you're not going to find a better one than that. Good play made by Eric Smith who tore his knee ligament midway through last year. He's back out on the field makes the stop there for the Buckeyes. 250 and counting in this one. Curtis Samuel had himself a big game today. Oh. Running the ball, catching the ball. I mean, he just was all over the field. What a weapon he's going to be. Urban Meyer and Warner to play with in this offense as that pass is caught on the sidelines by Zimmerman. 12 yard gain in a first down. Coaches told us earlier this week at Bowling Green that James Morgan has an NFL caliber arm. But what he has to figure out is got to understand to go make plays and quit thinking so much. He's a youngster, and they said the problem with Morgan is he's just continued to think through the game and not just use his skills and get out there and play the game. Freshman out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Threw for almost 6,000 yards in his last two high school years. Out 
Not much running room up the middle with Rashad Berry there to make the tackle for Ohio State. Better days are ahead for this Bowling Green team. So offensive line's not bad. I did like Kanapke. Uh, you know, you have you have a couple of kids who can make some play plays. It's just, you know, it's obvious they were overmatched from the start of today's football game. Stumbling in the backfield and able to move forward a yard or two. Not much running room there for Donovan Wilson. Jones on the stop for Ohio State. Keandre Jones, a freshman from Maryland, true freshman in his first game. A lot of youngsters getting a chance to play. We knew that would be the case coming in with 16 starters gone from a year ago. But maybe even deeper into the depth chart than the Buckeyes had thought today. Fourth down. Three yards for the first. Nice throw. And a first down to Zimmerman. Zimmerman down 77 to 10, hustles right up, gets back to the line. Cleveland down to the 39. Clock continuing to run as we wind this one out here in Columbus. Buckeyes impressive in their victory today. Cleveland. One more carry, tackle made for the Buckeyes by Nick Connor. DeAndre Jones there as well, and that will be the final moment of a record-setting day for Ohio State. The Buckeyes, in dominant fashion, take care of Bowling Green. The final score, 77 to 10. Curtis Samuel. JT Barrett, quite a day for those two offenses.